Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I, you know, last week, uh, yeah, I took off just to uh, meditate on John 1, because this is a powerful. We've ended Galatian, book of Galatian. We really had, God had something to say to us, especially concerning, you know, the flesh and the spirit. Now we're going to, we're going we're gonna to concentrate on Jesus, uh, you know, uh, you know, because God say, this is my son here, him. So before we get started, let's go through a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for your continued teaching, giving us understanding, giving us knowledge, and above all, giving us your wisdom, your wisdom, wisdom to do and understand who you are. And we thank you. We thank you for your word. And as we get into the book of John, we thank you. We ask you to continue to open up our understanding. We thank you for it in advance. Give us our understanding of who you are, because John is revealing who you are through your word. And uh, so we want you to give us a greater and a deeper depth of understanding of who you are, because once we understand who you are, we will walk into our purpose in this life and we will get to that purpose when we continue to follow your word and to dig and to seek so that we may find out who you are and who we are in you in Christ Jesus so father we thank you and we praise you again I can't say that uh, at least I can't I can't say that uh, enough and you know I say it every day bended knees, praying, and even up, you know, just on my way to work and every area, hour, and almost every minute of the day, if I'm not in the conversations with others concerning who you are. So, Father, we thank you, and, uh, and, and we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so here we all share our screen, but I got my little sidekick, uh, you know, each week I'm going to try to give up different uh picture uh of not only my grand or, and other pictures of others to try to get a deeper revelation of what we are going to talk about the spirit of god is going to use me like he always does when trying to just all i'm doing is reading he said just read he said let me let me let me do the reveal just read the word and a lot of folk won't understand it but we will read it. That's my assignment, like it always been, you know, because folk don't read the word. And so we're going to read it. I'm using the Amplified version, and I'm going to right now share our screen. And then we're going to begin. Okay, we're going to begin. We're going to go up. You know, I got another picture. Uh, but we're going to first, we always start like we did with every Every revelation, wherever we go, we start with any beginning God. And I always put Jesus' name next to it because we really going into John looked at this uh at, at Jesus to me as God, the Son of God, the God, God, God. I'm gonna keep saying that. He looked at, you know, each writer had how they looked at Jesus. You know, uh Matthew looked at Jesus as a king. That you know, you look and looking at uh Mark looked at Jesus as a servant, and uh Luke looked at him as that perfect man, and now John is looking at Jesus as God, as the word of God. And you let, let's get into it. We we let, we're gonna let when you read it, you decide on you know, based on the spirit of God in you. And, you know, if you're born, you know, hopefully you're born again and you're a believer of the word, believer of God, believer of the Father. Okay, so let's get back. He said, in the gospel book, according to John, you know, Christ is God's word. According to John, Christ is God's word. And God's word reveals his purpose. Okay, I put that in there, you know, based on what my understanding of God's word is, okay? And he said, in the beginning, he starts off, you know, and this is John, John wrote, John wrote this, he got Holy Ghost and John wrote just in the beginning was the word, and the word 
was with God and the word was God. That's John 1. Now we're going to get into John 1 again, but I want to, I'm going to keep that magnified on us every week until we get through with the book of John, the gospel of John. And John, the gospel of John had a purpose. Everything has a purpose, okay? So we're going to look at it. And it's the, the, the John's purpose, you know, the Holy Ghost used John to, and is to present the miracles of Jesus Christ performed. So just to present them, okay? To perform so that those who read it will believe that Jesus is the Christ. He's the Savior and Lord. You can read that John gave us a little glimpse of that in John 20, 31. That was his, that's John's read, his purpose. And plus John, and John divided his, uh, John, the book of gospel divided, divided in, uh, you know, like a chron chronologically as Jesus like He started off with the pre-existence of Christ, Jesus. And that was John 1 through 1, 18, the pre-existent. He existed before. Okay, he didn't just, he didn't just all of a sudden was born and then he started his life. No, he was he was before and he, he starts that. And then he said, Christ Jesus, for the, you know, that you talk about verses 19 through and go to chapters four through 54. He said, Christ Jesus popularity during the second, you know, first first year, his ministry. He starts off with the ministry. Okay, and then he. He, he is divided into Christ Jesus' popularity, okay, during the second year, okay? Then he starts with Christ Jesus' opposition against, you know, Christ Jesus' opposition against him in the third year, okay? It was the ministry. Well, that led to Jesus' crucifixion. You can look at the time and death. And then, the, finally, you know, Book of Gospel of John is about him that it talks about Jesus when there are 40 days following his resurrection. What happened? What did he do? Okay. Okay. So we're going to start our reading. He said, okay, we start off with uh, maturity. Maturity focus is in chapter one, the word of God became flesh. And we're going to hear the Lamb of God. We're going to hear that word of John the Baptist. You know, going to call the Lamb of God. That's my little grand and grandmother sitting by, uh, she said, no, grandma like laughing. Okay, so we got all that out of the way. Now, we're going to go with the reading. It's about five chapters, so just hold on to, that's five five uh, pages, so hold on to your hat. We're just going to read it. We're just going to try to read it in, together. He said, in the beginning, God. He said, in the beginning, before all times was the word. Okay. And the word was with God and the word was God himself. I put the old Jesus in there because you got to, uh, you know, God always, the spirit of God always instructed me. He said, come on, we're going to put Jesus name in there. And and so you can say Jesus, 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 you know, we're going to keep saying it. Okay. He, Jesus was pre present originally with God and all things was made. And came into existence through him, Jesus. And without him, Jesus, there was not even one thing made that came, that has come into being. So people, we got to go back and forth with folk every day. In him, Jesus was life. And the life was the light, Jesus, the light of men. I'll put Jesus' name in it. And the light shine on, on and in the darkness. And the darkness has never overpowered it. It put it out. It will never, you see, it never put it out or absorbed it or appropriated it or is unreceptive uh, to it. That's why, in other words, you, you ask people, they, they don't have, they have a fall, you know, they, they're just walking in darkness. They don't know. He said, there came, there came a man that sent from God, whose name was John. We know him as John the Baptist. This man, John the Baptist, came to witness that he might testify of the light, that all men might believe in it. You know, when they say believe, we mean a brother had a believe, they got to appear. 
You got to trust it. You got to rely on it. Okay. Through him. So John came that they may, uh, you know, he may be they, they, through him. They might kind of comprehend who the light was. Yeah. He said he was not the light. And we're going to get into a conversation with him and the Jews because they Jews gone. Jews is really talking about leadership. Uh, he said it was not the light himself. But he came that he might bear witness. And that's what we are. We bear witness of the light. We bear witness of Jesus. We Jesus witnesses regarding the light. There was the true light. Jesus was then coming into the world. There was the true light coming into the world. And the genius perfect steadfast light that illuminated every person. This light illuminated every person. He, Jesus, came into the world and the world through and through the world was made, though the world was made by him, the world didn't even recognize him. The world didn't recognize God when he came to earth. Jesus did not know him. They didn't know him as Jesus. He, when he's talking about Jesus, came to that which belonged to him. He came to the Jews, to him, to his own his domain, his creation, things in the world, and they who, they say, do who work his own, those who professing to be his own, did not receive him. Okay? And did not welcome him. And we're going to get into that. But as many as did receive and welcome him, okay, you receive, you believe, you receive. He said, look at that. He said, he gave them authority and privileges and their power, privileges and rights to become the children of God. Okay? That is to those who believe, who hear, trust, and relied on his name. Mm, we're going to get into that later in some of the chapter 17. Who own their birth, neither by to flesh, to blood, to bloods, nor the will of the flesh, that of physical impulses, nor to the will of man, that of natural father, but to God, okay? In other words, God did it, okay? They didn't own their birth to, to flesh. Those who believe, who owe their birth, neither to blood, in other words, this is a spiritual thing. Nor to the will of flesh, you know, that figure that that passing fluids that we do, uh, man and woman, nor to the will of man, the natural father. Okay. What? To God. God did it. He makes us children of God. They are born of God. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's what we're talking about up here. They're born of God. This piece right here. And if you want to look at it that way, to really not can confuse you anymore, they are born of God. So we start with chapter, that was chapter, end of chapter 13. I mean, end of uh, verse 13. In the word, look at it. <laughs> In the word, Christ became flesh. The word, the word of God, what we're talking about in the beginning. Became flesh, human, incarnated, and tabernacle. Okay? He fixed his tent in Jesus, the God himself, and he lived a while among us. God was in Jesus reconciling the world. And we actually saw his father's glory. You know, look, look at that. He saw his father's glory. His honor, his majesty, such glory as the only begotten son receives from his father, full of grace, favor, loving kindness, and truth. Mm. Look at that. He said the word became flesh, like man. Okay, he became like us, human incarnated. He became a little bitty baby. And he tabernacled among us. And we saw his father's glory his honor, his majesty, such glory as the only begotten son. That's what, that's the man piece. Only begotten son. 
receive from his father. Okay. There we go. We can capitalize that. Full of grace. He was full of grace, favor and loving kindness. And he was full of truth. Because we're gonna go, we're gonna put all cows so you understand this from his father. Okay. Look at that. John testified among him, okay? Testified about him, about Jesus. And he cried out, this is he of whom I said, he, Jesus, who comes after me has priority over me. For he, Jesus, was before me. Look at him. He was before me. Okay, okay. But I'm testifying of him. He, Jesus, takes rank above me. For he, Jesus, look at him, existed before me, before I did. Even though John was born before Jesus, John was born before. He said, but Jesus existed before him. Fullness, abundance, we have all received all and had shared. And, and he said, we were all supplied with one grace. Look at that, one grace after another and spiritual blessings and spiritual help on spiritual blessings, even favor among favor. That's what grace does for you. You know, God's grace is fish and gift heaped upon us. Here, here, look, look at what John said. He said, for while the law was given through Moses, the law was given through Moses. I'm going to capitalize that grace. Grace, unearned. We unearned it. You don't can't work for it. Unearned undeserved favor and spiritual blessings and truth okay came through Jesus Christ the law came to Moses given to Moses see law can't save him, but it's grace oh that amazing grace grace unearned undeserved favor spiritual blessings and truth came through Jesus Christ no man has ever seen God at any time, no man has ever seen God at any time. The only unique, this unique, okay? Son, Jesus, the word made flesh, or the only begotten of God, God's word, who is in the bosom, in the intimate presence of the Father. He has declared him. He, the Father, has revealed him. You're going to see Jesus talk about that, has revealed him and brought him out where he can be seen. That's a word we ain't flesh. He brought himself out so you can see him. You won't see any other God but Jesus. Okay. He said, I, I brought him so you can see him. You can touch him. You can feel him. Okay. Okay. He, the Father, has interpreted him. Okay. And he, the Father, has made him, Jesus, known. This is my son, hear him. Okay. Now we're going to go to testimony of John the Baptist. Verse 19. And this is the testimony of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites to him from Jerusalem and asked him, who are you? <laughs> That's what that's what leads you. Who are you? Who, who gave you that authority? Hey, brother, you know, Minister Lane, who gave you the authority? Hmm. Who gave you authority to, 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 to put this on uh, on YouTube? Who are you? He confessed and admitted that the truth. He admitted the truth and did not try to conceal it but acknowledge that I am not the Christ. I know you guys think I'm, like, I'm not. I'm a witness just like John. I'm a son. They asked him, what then are you, Elijah? And we're going to get into that. I wish, you know, we had time to really interpret with it because, you know, Jesus, you know, he said that John was, uh, he, said, nah, he said, no, I'm not. And we had we had we had a theological term for that. Are you the prophet? 
Jesus? He said, no. He said, are you that pro are you the prophet? You know, that's what Moses is talking about. Prophet come on, you're going to hear him. He said, no. But then they said to him, who are you? Tell us so that we may give an answer to those who sent us. And that's a, you think that's a reasonable uh, request. What do we say about yourself? He said, I'm a voice. Go tell him, I'm, I'm the voice that's crying aloud in the wilderness, the voice of one shouting in the desert. You know, when Isaiah said, that, you know, prepare your way for the Lord. I'm preparing the way for the Lord. Level straight out the path of the Lord Jesus Christ. As the prophet Isaiah said, he said, I'm that voice that you, you, you read about in Isaiah. That's who I am. I'm a witness. He said, a messenger has had, had been sent from the faith. The messengers have been sent. He said, they are, and they asked him, well, why then are you baptizing if you're not the Christ? Ooh. See, there you go. See, yeah, you ain't Christ. Why are you out here? Why, why are you wasting our time? You ain't doing that. If you're not Elijah and the prophet, why are you out here thinking yourself to be something? And John, well, John gave him an answer. He said, I'm only baptizing in water. You know that? He said, among, among you, and he's telling them, there stands one, Jesus, whom you do not recognize. He's among you, but you do not recognize. In whom this Jesus you are not acquainted. In whom Jesus you know nothing. And he said, it is he who's coming after me is preferred before me. Okay, he's coming after me and preferred before me. The strings of whose sandals I am not worthy to unloose. Okay. He said, these things occurred in Bethany. Okay. Across the Jordan. At the Jordan crossing where John then was 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 then baptizing. These are powerful scriptures. You, you gotta understand. He said, I, I ain't here. Y'all looking for somebody that's not, hey, uh, yeah, I'm not even worthy to untie his shoes. Okay. He's preferred before me. I'm just here, to, you know, preparing the way, making the way straight. I'm baptizing in repentance. That's what a lot of people do, baptizing in repentance. Don't baptize in the spirit of God. Okay. Okay. That's why a lot of folks still don't know who Jesus is. That's why we're reading this. A man must be born again. You just don't baptize in water. You baptize in he, Jesus baptized you in the spirit of God. So you know something, who he is. Okay. Okay, the Lamb of God. And the next day, John here. John said, you know, even though John, they were cousins. If physically, they didn't know each other. He said, the next day, John saw Jesus coming. Him, coming to him. And he said, oh. Look, there's the Lamb of God. There's the Lamb. There's Jesus, the Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world. That, that's a powerful say. You can we, we can preach on and teach on that's that right. He, he, here's the Lamb. You know, in Revelation, there the Lamb came. You know, came. You know, John, John, the the apostle, he was crying because he, he couldn't nobody open the book. But they they say, oh, no, stop crying. Here, look, the Lamb. Okay, here he is, the lamb slain <laughs> before the foundation of the world. Here you go, here you go, here you go. Don't worry about John, he, he can do it. He, he don't open it. He said, he's Jesus, take away the sins of the world. He said, that's what he did, took away the sins of the world. You got to believe, that's what people don't understand. Some people think that, you know, yeah, you got to believe though. Tell people that you don't have to believe. He, he did it. No, you got to believe. You got to believe in Jesus. That's why narrow and hard is the way. He said narrow is the way. Few find it because they got all these other ways to God. No, it's only through Christ Jesus that a man can be saved. Only through Christ Jesus a man can be saved. Come sin, he took away the sins of the world. But you got to be born again. That's what Jesus, we're going to get to that in chapter three. Where you just hold on to your hat. He said, this is he of whom I said, after me comes a man who has priority. He has priority. Okay. He has priority over me who who, who takes a rank above me because, well, see, there go that because, because he 
Jesus was before and existed before I did. You know, he, he's the creator. Okay. And I did not know him and did not recognize him myself. You know, you here you baptizing and, and you don't even know who he is. But it is in order that he, Jesus, should be made manifest and revealed to Israel, be brought out where we can see him, that I came baptizing in water. See, John gave me that because he's Jesus was before me, existed before I did. And I did not know him and did not even recognize him, even though we cousins, myself. But it is a first cousin. But in order, in, in order that he should be made manifest and be revealed to Israel, be brought out, you know, we got the little parentheses, those brackets, out where we can see him, that I came baptizing in water. John gave further evidence. Okay. Come on, come on, John. What, what is your evidence? Saying that I have seen the spirit of God descending as a dove out of heaven and it dwelt on him, never to depart. That's where your power comes from. When the Holy Ghost, not only he's in you, he dwells upon you. That's where the power, that's, where the, that, that's the power of God. See, Jesus couldn't do, can't, can't do it. You know, as a, as a man, he needed the Holy Ghost. He was the Holy Ghost. That spirit, that word is that spirit. He said, the word I speak is spirit and life. We get to that too. You, you got to understand this, this triune or trinity, these people call God. These are persons. One person. Three function. I leave that alone. And I did not know him. That's his John talk. I did not know him. Jesus nor recognize him, but his he he's talking about the Father who sent me. You know, Jesus really sent him, but he, he don't understand. Sent me to baptize in water. Said unto me, upon him, okay, upon him, upon the Son, who's who's in the flesh now. My word birthed into this world. His flesh dwell. I birth. You know, okay, I leave it on. Okay. The word of God made flesh. And he's, here you go, whom you see shall see the spirit descending and remaining on that one is he who baptized with the Holy Spirit. And a lot of folk, get, they get scared. They say, I don't know about this Holy Spirit. They keep some people speaking in tongues, some people dance, some people just bold. Say, what's going on with these folks? They're crazy. Okay, no, they're not. They just baptized with, with the Holy Spirit. And I seen and, and I have seen that happen. I actually did see it. And as my testimony is that this is the Son. This is Jesus. Oh God. This is Jesus. He's the Son. He's the man. He's the man. He's he, he that's the man piece of God. You know, God is in him reconciling the world. The spirit is never going to leave him. The spirit of God is never going to leave him. That's God in the flesh. Okay, that's his word. In the first disciple, again, the next day, John was standing in the two disciples of his disciples. He looked at Jesus as he walked along and said, look, there's the lamb of God. The two disciples heard him and said, said this, and they followed Jesus. He said, look, that's the Lamb of God. That's basically, he said, you know, you got to understand. But Jesus turned and he, he saw them following him. And he said to them, what are you looking for? That's what, that's what, that's a, you better look at the spirit. What he said, what are you looking for? What, what are you looking for? What are you, why are you following me? What are you looking, what are you looking for? That's what I tell me. What are you looking, what are you looking for? Jesus, always, that's a Jesus question. What are you looking for? And what, you know, you know, and what is it? What, what do you wish? What, what are you doing? What do you want? And they answered him, Jesus. He says, I'm Jesus. Translate his teacher. Where are you going? Where are you staying? See, that, that's telling them they want a relationship. Where, where are you staying? 
He said, he said, you know, come and see. Come see. Okay. So they went and they saw where he was staying and they remained. Okay. They remained with him that day. Well, he said, come see. Okay. That's up to you. That's free will. You come see. And they did. Okay. And that was about the 10th hour, about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard was John. There you go. Said follow and said and follow Jesus was Andrew and Simon Peter, brother. Simon, and it was John, and it was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first sought out and found his own brother Simon and said, Hey, come, hey, we have found and discovered the Messiah. We found Jesus, man. Come on, which is translated as the Christ, the anointed one. Okay, the Messiah means the anointed one. Okay, Andrew then led and brought Simon to Jesus, and Jesus looked upon him and said, You're Simon, the son of John. You're Simon, son of John. You should be called Cephas, translated to Peter as a stone, you know, small stone. Okay, translated Peter as stone. Okay. And Jesus called Philip and Nathaniel. This Jesus started to build his team, build his apostle team. So next day, Jesus desired and decided to go to Galilee. And he, Jesus, found Philip and said to him, join me as my attendant and follow me. Follow me. Join me as my fellow. Come on, come on follow me, brother. Now, Philip was, was from Bethesda. Okay, the same city as Andrew and Peter. Philip sought and found Nathaniel and told him, we have found and discovered the one Moses in the law. Also, that prophet wrote, the prophets wrote about Jesus from Nazareth, the legal son of Joseph. Uh-oh. And they and Nathaniel said, hey, come on, folks. He said, he answered, said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And they said, come see. Come see, even though Jesus really wasn't from that, he, born, he was raised in Nazareth, he was born in Bethlehem. See, they, they knew the scriptures. He, think, he said, come see, come see, brother. Come see. That's Jesus, said, come see. They said the same thing, and Jesus saw Nathaniel coming. Here, Jesus, he saw, he saw Nathaniel coming, okay, toward him, and he said, concerning him, see. Ooh. Jesus saw him say, see, concerning him, say, see, oh, see, you, you got to pick up words. And that's the thing. When you're in the word a lot, you start picking up little things other people don't pick up. See, I want you to open your eyes, brother, and see. That's you. Here's an Israelite indeed. He says, see, here's an Israelite indeed, a true descendant of Jacob, in whom there is no guile, nor deceit, and falsehood, and duplicity. And Nathan said, how do you know me? Uh-oh. <laughs> Jesus, come on, man. How do you know me? You don't know me. You say, okay, yeah. how, how is it that you know these things about me? You know, how do you know I don't have any gall or falsehood or deceit or falsehood or duplicity? And you talking about some, a descendant of Jacob. How do you know who I am? And Jesus answered, before, before ever Philip called you, when you were still under fig tree, oh, oh how do you, whoa, I, Jesus saw you. And they think, and they think, what? Teacher, you are the Christ. Teacher, you are the Son of God. You are, you are the Christ, the Son of God, the Anointed One. And you say, uh, you, you, you're the King. <laughs> you're the King of Israel. You, you're the one. That, yeah, come on, I, I'm sitting here. I'm meditating on the Word. I know who you are now. Based on just what you said, you know, you know. Then what you say? And Jesus replied, because I said that I saw you beneath a fig tree and you believed. Look at that. It, that's what I said. When I first believed, I believed. You know, I was a walking on. I didn't believe. Then I, I heard the message. Some, I heard later somebody was praying for me. I believed. And, and you believe, you rely, and you trust in me. This is Jesus talk. And you, you shall see greater things. You think that that boy, you gonna, I'm gonna blow your mind. You just, yeah, I just said that. The greater thing, you gonna you, this. Then here you go. 
He said, then he, Jesus said, I assure you, most solemnly, you know, I, I, I tell you the truth, that you shall see heaven open and the angels of God, you know, that was back in Genesis, you know, ascending and ascending on Son of Man. Uh-oh. See, that, that, was, that was, he gave him a little bit to, to chew on. <clears throat> he said, you know, go to Genesis, you see Jacob, Jacob saw, see Jacob saw Okay, so he gave a little thing to chew on, and they think really now he's he's committed. He's fine. I'm, I'm in. I'm in. Like I said when I was born again, I was in. I still had some stuff to work out. God still had and still working out some stuff in me. Still working out a lot of stuff. But he said, and he said, look at this. I said, I assure you, Solomon. I tell you, you you don't see the heavens open, and the angels of God. Yeah, angels of God angels of God, ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. That was a peace in the Word of God that they knew about, at least Nathaniel knew about. I don't know about the others, how, how they understood the Old Testament or, the, you know, the Genesis portion. Okay? So we're going to stop sharing. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you and I praise you for that bit we started off with. In the beginning, God, and that's where we're gonna stay. As we as we unfold you and in the in the in the side of Jesus reconciling the world unto yourself. So, Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you this Saturday morning, 10th of June, 2023. You told me to go from Galatia to John, and you're gonna give me my assignment and as we go through this book, my next assignment. But Father, we thank you for your reading, we thank you for your understanding. And this is about you. This is nothing about this, this vessel that you're using at this point in time. It's about you and your glory and your honor. And Father, we thank you for those who are listening and will come a part of your ministry and become a part of your disciples when you when they hear this word. We hear, hear the Spirit of God speak it and they become mesmerized and say, I want no more. Uh, Lord, uh, help me to be confident. You know, what this I must do to be saved and born again. And you will accommodate them. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We praise you. We lift you up. We magnify your holy again. So, Father, as we conclude this first chapter, your word was made flesh in the beginning. The word was with God and the word was God. You gave them you gave them power and authority to become sons. And then when they believed, you the one exercised your spirit inside them, helped them to understand who you are and what your purpose is in this in this reading. They were their purpose is in this life. We're gonna get to that. We're gonna understand purpose when we start talking to Jesus in John, this gospel of John. So, Father, we thank you. Amen. And we say this in Jesus' name. Amen. I told you. I told you. We're we going to get full. This year, to, uh, 2023 is the year. We're going we gonna to be full. We're going to full of full, full of God. Full. We ain't talking about no halfway. We ain't talking about no fourth of a tank. We talking about a whole full. Full. Well, you know, fill your, fill your vehicle up with gasoline. You, you, you want to make that thing click, click. They, they, ain't, they can't even get no more oil in it. Can't get no more gas in it. We're going to make sure it's ready to go for your ministry. So, Father, we thank you. And I tell you, uh, you know, you know, when I, I guess I read all this, he going to keep me. I'm going to go right back in in the, in the future until I'm, until I'm taken home and I'm going to, we're going to go through the understanding piece. We're going to understand. We're going to just put a little, a little bit of understanding. That's why I like teaching. Because, see, you, you preach the sinners, but you teach saints. You know, you really teach them. And that's what we lack. And we lack in a lot of the teaching and lacking a lot of understanding of who God is. Because when you understand who God is, you're going to understand who you are. And you're going to understand your purpose. Because we are in Christ Jesus. And, uh, you know, I'll be trying to explain that. Some of the folk on the job, they, you know, they, they say the head knowledge but they don't understand the spiritual knowledge. Sometimes I used to do it. I didn't understand. I had head knowledge, but didn't have spiritual knowledge of who God was and is and forevermore. I didn't understand it until the spirit of God. And he said, you ready now, son. You ready to understand who I am. 
And so, so when people come to you, you know, they yeah, they think you're crazy. They yeah, they call you the nutcase. <laughs> They're gonna be saying a lot of other things about you because you 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 still act, you still that flesh piece is still high, but he's getting it down. And so uh that's his job. My job is to pray to him and say, Lord, you know, I, I need help. I I need your help. You know, search me, you know where there's no parts of you and me, that part of me that's, that's still resisting you, get it out. And then he helps me, but he do it with his grace and his mercy. He don't, he don't kill me. He said, you, you're already dead to the world, but now you got to understand that you're dead to the world. You have to be alive, totally surrendered all to me. And then you know, I say, I understand, Father. Oh, Lord Jesus, I understand. I understand, but you know, it's 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 you know this this flesh, you know, sometimes it's it's weak, and you know, flesh is nothing. Flesh is grass. So you know, we enough of that. God is good, and He's good, and He's worthy to be praised. So uh, we until next time, until until we we meet again next week. Well, hopefully, we uh, we go over that. Uh, again, this and then we we, we go over chapter two, and God bless you. God keep you. God call His face to shine on you. In Jesus' name, we go. We go. We won't keep you longer. God bless you.